Hi hey everyone, welcome to the front row with Ed. Today we're going to talk about the importance of thoracic spine rotation or spinal rotation, but most of our spinal rotation comes from our thoracic spine. Quick anatomy review here. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There he is. Okay. First seven cervical, next 12 thoracic, five lumbar, then we have the sacrum. Most of our rotation needs to come from our middle part of our spine. I treat many chronic lower back pain people by treating their thoracic spine. The lumbar spine can flex and extend, doesn't really like to rotate very much. But if I get stiff through my thoracic spine, guess what? Lumbar spine has to rotate. Sooner or later, lumbar spine says no mas. And next thing you know, you've got chronic lower back pain, spasms, tightness, whatever you want to call it. Needless to say, it doesn't work very well. So a simple way to test for thoracic spine rotation while you're sitting. Ideally, I want you to be at 90-90, so 90 degrees of knee flexion, 90 degrees of hip flexion here. And I just want you to see how far you can rotate. You should be able to take that shoulder and be perpendicular. So I should be able to bring that shoulder all the way over, both ways. If you can, you've got a decent level of thoracic spine rotation. I'm going to show you a simple way to try to increase thoracic spine rotation. So this is what we'll do first. I want you to rotate as far as you can one way. Ideally, you feel a stretch at the end. You're going to kind of use your hands however you want to to kind of anchor it. But basically, you're going to put a twist into it as far as you can. Then once you get to the end, you're going to take your head and rotate it to the opposite direction as far as you can. And then the other way as far as you can. You're pushing the barrier with your neck rotation, but obviously not into pain. You know, use common sense. After about three of those, bring your head back to neutral, take a big breath in, and on the exhale, you'll be able to go a little bit more into rotation. Once you've locked it as far as it can go, turn your head again three times. With that cervical spine, push the boundary just a little bit of both left and right rotation. After three, take a big breath in. On the exhale, take up a little bit more slack. Repeat that sequence three times, and I can almost guarantee you that you will have better thoracic spine rotation when you're done. Obviously, same thing on the other side. So what does it look like? Pretty simple. I'm not going to go through the whole routine, but I'll give you an idea. Rotate to the right as far as you can. Lock it in there. By lock it in there, I mean use your hands, whatever you need to. Lock it in there. Turn your head to the left as far as you can, to the right as far as you can. Push the boundary just a little bit as long as there's not pain. After three of those, relax, take a big breath in. On the exhale, take up the additional slack. I don't know if you can tell, but each time I do this, I go a little bit further with my thoracic spine rotation. After three, big breath. On the exhale, rotate in further. Usually it takes, yeah, you could probably do it a couple times on each side until you feel like you've got some better thoracic spine rotation. At the end of this video, I'm going to put a couple links to some other videos that talk about the importance of thoracic spine mobility. We only go as far as our thoracic spine takes us. So if you do no other stretches, make sure that you do the big three for your thoracic spine. Thoracic spine extension, thoracic spine rotation, and side bending. You can find links to all those at my channel, Front Row with Ed. If you have any questions, let me know. Leave a question down below and see how you do, okay? Good luck.